Today, we are painting a shimmery gold embellished floral greeting card that's good for any number of occasions. Because of the festive gold painting, you could use it for a New Year's card, or a Mother's Day card, or a birthday card, or an anniversary card. This is a really great one to have on hand for almost any occasion. Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, my name is Teresa. I'm a surface pattern designer and watercolor artist. And you guys are really loving the Alaska stories. So I love that because I love to talk about Alaska. <laughs> so because you've requested some more stories, I am going to tell you the first of the wolf stories that I have. So let's start painting so that we can get to the story. This is the card we are going to make today. I was thinking, you know, Christmas is only a couple of days away, and let's say you, you didn't get all your Christmas cards out this year. Maybe you want to send a New Year's card. Well, this would be a really pretty New Year's card. You could even put a piece of masking tape through the center and paint your whole painting and then come back and write in 2024, you know, whatever the year happens to be. Um, right there, you could do that, or just send it just like this. Because of the gold, it makes it very festive. So really, you could adapt this to any type of card that you would want to send. Now, this is my sample one that I did, and it's a little bit larger than five by seven, just because it was a scrap piece that I had, and I really didn't bother measuring it. I was just playing with ideas. So it's just a tad bit larger than that. So this one's not going to fit in an envelope. So I marked off a five by seven here on my paper. And we'll talk about that in a minute. We're gonna mask that off. But first let's talk about this card. So it's just two florals. Um, the colors are very soft and pleasing and that's why it works for any number of types of cards. So let's talk about our colors. We are going to use cadmium Free Yellow Cadmium free orange plus cadmium free yellow plus a little drop of opera pink and that will give you a nice peachy color. Then we're, the second flower is more pink so it's the same exact formula only a little heavier on the opera pink. So you just play with that ratio until you get the color that you like. Then this one is about equal parts sap green plus olive and then this one is olive plus under sea green. And by using olive in both of these, it helps those to complement each other without being a completely different green. And then we're going to use for the gold. I've had a lot of questions about this. I've used it in my Christmas videos quite a bit. It is Sminky's Aqua Bronze Rich Gold. It's very powdery and See, it goes a long way. I've been using this for a couple of years and I am nowhere near finished using this up. It is still pretty much a full thing, but I usually only use it, you know, special occasions or Christmas. I am also using Academy Watercolor Paper by Baohong. On my paper review, I mentioned this one, but I did not review this one. I reviewed the other of Meaden and Baohong, you know, the other papers. This is the rough version, which I have to say, it's not nearly as rough as I thought it was going to be. In fact, I don't think it's any more rough than the artist professional grade. In fact, let me just grab that one and let's compare it. So the Baohong artist professional grade In my personal opinion, this one has more texture than the rough version. So I will not pay extra to get the rough again. It is more white, though I do like that. It is whiter. Okay, so let's tape off our border because we are going to put this nice gold border around it. Therefore, we need a nice white border out here. 
And I'm just using, I don't know what brand this is. Just a very low tack masking tape. And so in order to get these relatively even without actually measuring it, I'm just going to go midway down the tape. So I've got half the tape on and half the tape off. It's a nice, easy way to get roughly the same. Now I want to go very light to begin with. So I'm going to put a lot of water in this mixture to get that this light. And I'm just going to make some little petal shapes. Don't overthink it. And just kind of swish your brush around until you get a little bit of a flower shape. And then we can drop in a little bit more concentrated. Let it bleed out. And now let's go to this one. Same thing. Let's just pick a point and do some petals and I like it when they touch so they can bleed into each other and this card is much smaller so we may have to adjust it just a little bit as far as our leaves and all the extra elements go let's drop in some colors some darker pigment and see that has been absorbed. So I am going to grab some st just straight orange and drop it in while it's still wet. And maybe even drag down a few little lines. And it's okay if we put this orange in this one too. Let's have some different colors going on here. That's looking pretty messy. So it's still wet. So if you're not happy with it, just keep working on it. This out here has dried, but I am going to take it from the wet area and go over that part. And as long as I'm very careful, that should be okay. I'm just dabbing my brush off a little bit and I'm going to clean that up a little bit. That's a little too strong, I think. I'll brush that out. I've got some hard lines going on here that I don't really care for. So we're in a stage right here where we can keep playing with it without doing too much damage. We're going to overwork it if we're not careful, but I shouldn't have any hard lines that's going to damage it too much. Okay, I like that better. Keep dropping in some deeper color. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of that darker mixture right here in the wet areas around the center on that one. 
And before all this dries, I want to get some of the leaves down. So I'm going to grab my green mixture and drag it off. And I want to pick some spots where it is still wet. That was dry. So if I touch it in here, there we go. We can get we can get that to bleed into there, just like here. And that was pretty light, so now I can add a little more. Pigment, darker pigment right in there. All right, so we want some other textures too. So I'm going to grab this olive and under sea green. That's a little bit darker, just by a little bit. And do these wispy. So I had one up here and we just want them to go everywhere. Not any particular type of leaf really, just, we're just adding texture really. And they can be thick or thin. Do that one a little thicker. So I'm gonna go back to this other green. Well, first, before those dry, I did not do this on the other one, but I think I'm going to do it on this one. And we'll come back and add gold to these too, but this might be kind of nice having these darker lines underneath the gold. So we'll try that. Let's get some more greenery. And this is dry, so it's not going to bleed out. So. I'm not going to worry about that too much. I just won't touch it necessarily. And I think I want another one of these leaves right there. Lighter color. Go back to this undersea green mixture. Maybe add a little, a little deeper, a little heavier greenery in here, as well as that wispy. And I think we're missing something down here with that darker tone. That, the wispiness, we need a little bit of that down here. It's kind of in the background. Oops. And I'm going to add a few gold leaves in here as well. But I think I want another one. See, I'm altering this a little bit. For comparison. So we don't have to stick to exactly what was done before. Just kind of see what happens as we're painting. This keeps lightening up quite a bit, so I want to add a little darker. Okay, we need to add some yellow in here. So I know you're wondering, am I going to tell the wolf story? 
So yes, while we're doing this part, now that we've got the main body going here, and we're just going to add some yellow touches and I'll add the stamens and then we'll talk about the gold. But before this completely dries, I do want to drop in the yellow. Okay, so one of my wolf pack stories is that one year in February, we had some family members come to visit us for the first time in Alaska. And so of course we wanted to, you know, take them on a drive and, you know, let them see Alaska. So I think while the centers are drying, I'm going to add some gold leaves within this. So, you know, we, we go on this little road trip and we were headed toward Fairbanks from Anchorage and there's a lodge there kind of out in the middle of nowhere and it's the place where we would always get gas because it's the only place there is to get gas at that point and so when you when you get there you you need to gas up you know so we decided it's also a lodge and we've and, and it's a little restaurant or this was a long time ago. I don't know if it's still there or not, but so we decided, okay, well, you know, let's just stay there for the night on this trip. It'd be a great reason to do it. And so we check in, we have supper in the little restaurant and they tell us that there are ski trails out back if we would care to go skiing. Well, yes, of course we would. So we get on this trail and there had been a fresh snow, so it was very powdery and that just made it more difficult. I was having trouble because this, this powder kept sticking to the bottom of my skis. So it was a little bit hard to, to maneuver and especially for someone who had never done it before. And so we were going slow. So we come to this little clearing we we come out of the there's some trees over here and we're on this path and there's this little bitty clearing with this little circle area right in here and you know we were just admiring the snow and and you kind of the trail goes around that little area and back into the woods again and so we went around that we didn't go very far and then we decided you know it's getting late let's 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 go back and um you know get comfortable in the hotel and so we do. The next morning we get up and we're about ready to hit the road. And you know, the, the sun's up and it's a beautiful day. And, and we were taking our time getting ready and having breakfast. And, and so we decided let's go one more time on this little trail. So we get our skis on, you know, the car's all loaded. And, and we head out and we go down that little trail and we come to that clearing things don't look right. It, it's, it looks different. And so we're not sure what, why does this look different than we remember it? And the closer we got, we realized that the snow in this little clearing area was all trampled and, and kicked about, you know, and we got a little closer and a little closer. And so we get really close and we're looking and we're trying to figure out why why is this this way? It was smooth last night. We're kind of double checking ourselves against each other going, this was smooth last night, right? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's the way I remember it. And then all of a sudden, I think it was my husband who saw it first. There was what was left of a moose carcass. It wasn't much of the moose left at all. There was no fur, there was no blood or anything. I mean, it was just the trampled snow and this one little piece of a moose. And the realization hit us, you know, of uh, this is a wolf pack that has taken this moose down. And see, there are caribou all over the place there, herds of caribou, and you, you see them all the time. And so at first we were, that was one of our speculations is that, you know, did the, the caribou herd come through here? You know, we didn't know. But anyway, no, it was, it was a moose kill. And that, 
that kind of freaked us out pretty well because we're standing right here in the middle of this moose kill and um you know they could still be there and it looked like a lot of them there were a lot of tracks and so we quickly got out of there we didn't want to be anywhere around that just in case they were still around and it was hard to tell when did this happen you know how long ago was it and we knew it was just overnight but so anyway that was we were much better skiers going back to the car <laughs> than we were when we were we were going out there we pretty much didn't ski we we sprinted it was a full-fledged sprint right back to the car okay now that we've got this much done i am going to take my gold and i'm just going to I don't want to put it here because I love that and I don't want to mess that up. I'm just going to do some little details. Just a few, outline a few of these, these petals. And you don't have to stay right with the outline of the leaf. You can get on the outside of it, or the petal, not the leaf. You can leave some white space in there. You don't have to be exact. I think that's what really makes it beautiful is when it's not so exact and don't do every single one of them and after that dries i'm going to come back and do those veins in gold too so i'll just see this one has a lot of that bleeding so i have to be very picky about where i put it see, that's pretty dry I think that's dry enough. I'm just going to use the tip of my brush to put some veins, gold veins, on this flower. Well, I'm glad y'all are enjoying the Alaska stories because I could talk all day about Alaska. I loved it we loved it we really did so and i have lots of stories so i'm glad y'all are enjoying that and we could add some to our leaves i did that on the first one and we don't even have to follow exactly where we put where we etched in the lines there this is very forgiving, you know, and you don't have to do every one. You can just do some of them. I didn't even etch that one. Can't see if I did that one. Okay, so now to do the border around the edge all the way like that the tape is really going to be our guide so i am going to put my tip right on the edge and just drag it straight across and it may not be perfectly straight on the paper side but that doesn't really matter and that was a little bit thin compared to the other one, so I'm going to do it again. So if you go half on, half off the tape, that will help you get it sort of straight. And it will help each side to be very similar in width. And I'm going to have to turn this a little bit. So that I can see that tape and drag my hand smoothly Oop. and I really kind of loaded up on the gold that time <laughs> that was that's a lot and I can see here that that was kind of thin you can kind of touch it up anywhere you think it needs to be touched up 
So just one more little thing about the wolf story. The other scary thing about this was that the night before, our lodge was having trouble with their heating. I don't think it would turn off or something like that. It was just, it was so hot in our room, you could barely stand it. It was crazy hot. And even though the temperature outside got down to below zero that night, we still slept with our windows open and we were still hot. And, but we were on the second floor, but still, and even with our windows open, we didn't hear any of this happening, which in itself is pretty scary that all that could happen so close by and we never knew it. Okay, there we are. And I usually like doing flowers in threes or odd numbers anyway, but for this size of a card and just this layout, I think the two works just fine. Let's look at them side by side. So as you can see, because this one was smaller, things are a little more compact, which I really like. I think that's better. It makes me want to go back on this one and add a few things in the background, which I may do, but I do like this one better. Well, I hope you had fun with that one. I know I sure did. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know. Leave any comments that you would like. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. I have a lot more fun watercolor videos and maybe some stories too coming up real soon. I can't promise a story every single time, but as long as y'all are enjoying them, I'll try to throw in some stories every once in a while. Just let me know if that's what you would like. Thanks so much, and I hope to see you next week. And I hope you have a very Merry Christmas.